welcome to Top of the Round Paradigm. My name's Kenan. I'm the GM for this campaign. With me we have... Hi, I'm Nikki and I play Clover. Hi, I'm Jorash and I play Varian. If you want to talk to us or join our listen parties, join our Discord. Link in the show notes. Please check the show notes below for any trigger warnings. Check out our merch on toterpodcast.com. What'd that mouth do? Do it be talking about Toter to your friends? Because word of mouth really helps... Speaking of things that help that don't cost you anything, reviews. Reviews are a fantastic way to show your love for a small indie podcast by heading over to Podchaser, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify to leave us a review or rating. Don't forget that Podchaser lets you review individual episodes in addition to the entirety of the show. So, head over there to all the places, leave a review, let us know how we're doing. We want to hear from you. And a huge, gigantic shout out to our executive producers, Jermaine and Ray. Thank you so much for your continued support. It is so greatly appreciated by all of us. In addition to that, huge shout out to all the rest of our patrons. We appreciate each and every one of you. And be sure to check your inboxes because we will be contacting you, Apostle Tier and above, about super cool title stuff and things. So next week, when you're listening to this segment... You're going to hear a whole bunch of really cool new titles from our patrons. Hmm, I wonder if there's anyone out there who can recap what happened last time. Who can tell us the news. Oh, wait. The news force is trying to show me something. In my final moments, it wants me to say... Future... Broadcasting. Just in with Justin. takes care of the birthday cards. Now I should make one that says something about best wishes. Yeah. No. Ah. Oh, the headaches are back. No. Not again. I don't want to tell the news. Ah. Please, I just want to write greeting cards. I don't want to do this. I don't Ow! Who's Varian? Why should anyone care that he found some lady's scarf? I could write a card for that. Ooh, it's a very niche card. I probably wouldn't sell a lot. Ah! Okay, so Pain was in Sabbath? Varian is looking for some girl named Clover who has a wanted poster and met some legendary guy named Reuben? Oh, now I can see this clover. She's she's met two of the other apostles in a town called... Uh, she's further up north, near Grace. Um, just go away, headache. Hate and fear are talking to clover. Fear is leading her to the stables so she can board her horse. Um... Then she goes to get some food from a tavern, and it's very busy and full of people, and something exploded and killed everyone and blew Clover out of the tavern? Well, that's terrible. I need to start making some of my deepest sympathy cards. Um, if anyone heard that, uh, greeting cards by Justin. Thank you. Huh. I guess that was Justin with Justin, our new newscaster. Doesn't look like he wants to be, though. Our story continues now. We left off with Clover. You being... Exploded out a window? Yeah. You simultaneously went to the window and to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and across gonna... town center. <laughs> but, but it wasn't sweat. That trip down, <laughs> it was hellfire. <laughs> Apparently so. You are currently still laying on the ground. Snow is falling a little heavier now as people are scrambling to put out the fire. That's good. The snow will help. Are we on me? Yeah, we're going to start with you. <laughs> no, he's describing that and he's going to be like, Varian. <laughs> All right, and then Varian. <laughs> Can I pick myself up? 
Uh, no, because I am still talking. Okay, sorry. <laughs> shut up, sorry, shut up, Nikki. I'm shutting up. You immediately die for interrupting me. <laughs> you roll your character. <laughs> As you lay there, any emotions of fear kind of fade away from you, and you hear some footsteps getting louder. Uh, well, this is awkward. Hi, Clover. At this point, can I try and stand? You can certainly try. Okay, I'm gonna... Roll an athletics check. Okay. <gasps> Natty fucking 20. Thank Congrats. you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You weakly get to your feet. Okay. She is trying to go towards the fire because she wants to help. So she is shakily trying to move forward. Roll perception check. Okay, then. Alrighty. <laughs> 29. As you stumble across the town center towards the restaurant, you notice that your hands are completely engulfed in flame. Doesn't hurt, though. And they're kind of dripping little wisps of flame onto the ground. Um, am I still wearing my gloves? <laughs> are they on fire? They are. Doesn't look like they're burning, though. Uh. Um, Roll a fortitude save. Oh, okay, Natty 20. Yeah, What's happening? As you continue to stumble forward, vision tunnels for a second and then restabilizes. And you see the humanoidal fire figure standing amongst the flames, staring at you with a grin. Cool. It's session two, Kenan. <laughs> uh, so Clover notices the fire on her hands. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Clover is going to stop for a moment and stare down at her hands, shaking. Is fear, like, next to me, or what? No perception check. Okay. 21. Fear is in front of you, suddenly. Okay. Well, um, um, I, 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 I have to go help. I, um. I thought you were nice, Clover. No, I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do anything. I, she's like kind of shaking off her hand. She's trying to get the fire to like go away. I need you to roll a will saving throw. 19. 19. That fails. Of course it does. Your arms fall off. Excuse <laughs> me? What? <laughs> yeah, you see them hit the ground. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um. <laughs> 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 your baby arms so oh grow back. my god you get a second pair holy fuck you're just a kid they fall off oh this my age. god they do not why is it always the limbs <laughs> take 45 mental damage she falls unconscious okay she's having the best day therian <laughs> <laughs> you and your bestest pal aren't there or not aren't there that is ruben <laughs> Arguably, <laughs> arguably, very and struggling worse right now. Clover is. <laughs> you talk to Ruben, okay? <laughs> you pretend to be I, his apprentice. I have literally nothing to say to you right now. And yet you keep talking. <laughs> the waiter comes back with a pitcher of ale and sets it in front of Ruben. Thank you, dear. So my plan was to head out in the morning. It's going to be a long trek to Grace. How long do you think it'll take to get that from here? On foot? A couple months. Months? Are you hard of hearing? You don't have anything faster, like maybe a horse or something? We could purchase a horse, sure. You got that kind of money? Well, my money just went to that ale, so... No, I doubt a horse is as cheap as that. 
You only had five copper to your name. Well, I do now. Roll a perception check. 34. You hear him mumble. Why'd I have to pick the broke one? Well, that's why I'm getting into this line of business. To get money. Wow, you heard that. Uh, I guess with the ears like that, (gasps) you would hear all sorts of things. You'd be surprised. Would I? What's the weirdest thing you've heard? Today or? In general. I did once hear someone talk about needing to uh, research a corpse that was killed by a creature to figure out what killed it. That didn't make any sense to me. That is pretty weird. (laughs) (laughs) So where are you from, friend? I'm from Gehenna. Mm, City boy, huh? Well... Looks like you haven't strayed too far from your home. How new at this are you? Well, I found a scarf earlier. <laughs> <laughs> the difference in vibe between the two is just like absolutely amazing. <laughs> a scarf. And you're going straight to tracking down a human. Well, the pay is better. It is definitely better. Not concerned you don't have enough experience for this? I just don't want you to get me killed, is all. Well, I won't get you killed. I'll kill you. <laughs> well, a subtle difference. <laughs> it's different. I think I'll be fine. I won't get you killed. All right. But uh, just so you are aware, I will not be putting my life on the line to save yours if things go sideways. Do you think they would with that child, or do you mean just traveling in general? Traveling in general. It's not the most hospitable place out there right now. Was it ever? Back when I was a kid, it wasn't as bad. But no, not really. (laughs) Right, so what shall we do till morning, other than you drinking? Uh, Well, if you don't drink, it's going to kind of be a buzzkill. We could just call it a night if you want. Um, just make sure you're at the city entrance by daybreak. All right, I can be there. I might stay here, see if anyone has heard anything. I don't know why they would, but sure, if you want to waste your time. Right, um, well... Daybreak it is, so I'll see you in the morning, Reuben. Are you leaving? I'll get up and I'll... How far is his table from the bar? 10, 15 feet. How loud is it in here? It's pretty loud. Is the waiter that came up there behind the bar right now? No, they are, I guess, in front of you now, helping with the group of humanoids that had the worn leather gear on. Okay, I'll take... The long way out and just kind of try and walk past that group just to try and see if I hear anything of interest from anyone. Okay. Roll a perception check. A20. And what is the full 38 god given roll? <laughs> 38. As you walk by, you hear one of them ordering a round of shots for the table. You hear two talking about a red-haired child potentially in the outskirts of the forest around Grace and how they are gearing up to head that direction (laughs) that night. Uh, They're just stopping to resupply and get some drinks before they head out. You did John Wicker. (laughs) (laughs) It's for Platt, homie. Oh, God. She's already having a rough time. (laughs) (sighs) <sighs> okay, so all the way up at Grace, possibly. Okay, good good to know. Anyway, I'll make my way towards the exit. Here you know that. As you continue towards the exit, the door bursts open, and there is the black-plated figure standing in the doorframe, whistling at the group. They all stand up and start falling out themselves. What do you want to do? So as I'm walking by them and overhear that, he bursts in. So I'm kind of in between them. Mm-hmm. I'll move out of the way and let them go first. 
The group of black leather clad humanoids filter out of the brewery. Is it me? Am I the drama? (laughs) (laughs) Everywhere. (laughs) You see the group kind of gather around the armored figure and then the mechanical one join them from the outside and all their shadows kind of pool together and get really dark and then they sink into the shadows. I see. What happens to the shadows after they sink in? They, they disappear. Just vanish? Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to turn around and walk back over to Reuben. Okay. Did you see that? Huh? What? See what? The group. The little group that left? Yeah. Yeah, they left. What about them? Did you see how they left? Uh, no. In the shadows. Okay. Do you, do you know of that group? The Archon? Yes, I know of the Archon. Well, as I was... How do you not? As I was leaving, I was walking by them. Well, never mind them. As the, the other group over there. And I kind of just gesture my head towards the worn leather group. Okay. They were speaking of a red-headed girl. And that they're setting out after this. Do you really want to wait till morning? What does a red-headed girl have to do with us? Is the bounty still on the table? Yeah, um, his his pint glass is on it. I will move his pint glass to the side and then point to the hair. <laughs> uh, I thought that was more brown. I have a lead. You want to go now? You want to screw around here? <sighs> I guess it's worth a shot. We can head out now. I'm really looking forward to sleeping in a bed tonight. I'm sure you'll be fine. You're an expert. I know I'm going to be fine, just preferences. I'd rather sleep in a bed than on the floor. Well, we should hurry if we don't want them to get a head start on us. Alright, one sec. And he will chug the rest of his alcohol, roll up the bounty, tuck it in his bag, roll a perception check. (laughs) 31. As he shoves this rolled up parchment into his bag, you see a wisp of shadow kind of flick out of his bag. I'll keep that a little bit to myself. Okay. It's just in his bag? Yep. <laughs> okay. Alright, uh, let's, let's get going. He kind of stands and stretches. Starts making his way downtown, walking fast, faces past, still making the same jokes. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so we're we're on the move, we're going. Um did you happen to know if they had any horses by chance we could borrow? Or are we doing this on foot? I didn't hear them say anything about horses, but they might. I don't know what they'd be. Uh, we're not hurt to check the stables, I guess. And he'll turn right out of the brewery and follow the right side of the aqueduct instead of the left. I will follow him. As he makes his way, what looks like heading towards the large cathedral in the distance, he will reach into his pack and pull out a black cloak and put it over his overcoat and kind of fasten it to around his neck and kind of melds in with his overcoat well that's pretty fancy ah thanks I stole it oh wow you really are good <laughs> I told you I'm a legend that's worth five copper <laughs> <laughs> Clover yes <laughs> as you come to you feel your arms bound behind you There is a burlap sack over your face, and you can see what looks like the diffused light from torches and the murmurings of a crowd. There, what feels to be a large rope around your neck. Uh, okay. And you hear, you are hereby sentenced to death for the murder of Chester Locke. Stella Cross, Mr. and Mrs. Crawford, and their kids Rory and Ivy, Lee Black, Cassidy Haddock, Marshall and Violet Holloway, and their kids Liam and Courtney. What? How do you plead? 
What? Are those your final words? No, I didn't. I I didn't do anything. Where, where am I? Is that what you said? Why are you asking me that in that tone? Just making sure. So I can basically see nothing. Because I have a sack over my head. Yes. Okay. This is very disorienting to, mm-hmm. to wake up like this. It is. I, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't do, I'm so sorry. I didn't do it. Can I help? Is anyone alive? You hear from the crowd. If she's not going to apologize, just string her up. It's cold out here. Apologize for what? The waiter exploded! (laughs) (laughs) You feel the noose tighten and your feet lift off the ground. Mm, Cool. All right. Is it painful or not? Kenan. It's not. Okay, but I can't fucking breathe. No, you cannot. That's great. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, Am I afraid? Nope. Do I hate anyone at the moment? Nope. Cool. <laughs> I love this. So she is gasping for breath, but she's not afraid, <laughs> and it doesn't hurt. So at least she's got that going for her, and I can feel my arms, too. Yep. yep. <laughs> okay. They okay. are very clearly still attached and feel like they're tied behind you. Okay. With rope or what? With rope. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. I'm just swinging around. <laughs> that depends how much you're struggling. I am struggling because this is really fucking disorienting. I can say fucking. Clover might not say fucking, but I sure will. Um, what the fuck? Number one. <laughs> number two. Um, what? And then number three. Uh, she is very fucking confused. She just woke up. She's has a noose around her neck, but it doesn't hurt. But she's gasping for breath, so that doesn't seem possible. Is this a dream? Doesn't really feel like it, but it doesn't hurt, and she's not fearful. What the fuck? <laughs> um, and also, yes, yeah, she is struggling because she truly did not do anything. All right, uh, roll a will check. Cool, cool, cool. Nineteen. You see right in front of your face a. Amber kind of burst into existence and catch the burlap sack on fire and kind of burn it away. And there's audible gasps from the crowd. And you hear, what use are the Archon if the Fae Touched are still getting in and killing our people? Yeah, well, she's gasping for breath, so she's not really talking. (laughs) But she is kind of looking around absolutely confused confused as she apparently dies. Can you tell me what she sees in her last moments of living? You see a figure in all black plate with a pretty large sword on their back that has cracks through it, kind of just looking in your direction. (laughs) There is a somewhat small perimeter of black leathered people kind of making a crescent around the group watching you hang. (laughs) There is a large mechanical humanoid sitting off in the back. I gained aggro from everyone. (laughs) Sitting on the mechanical humanoid is your bestest friend, Fear, who now has no eyes, looks much older, but has the same, like, leather gear on, and then... Pacing back and forth in front of them is a now cleaned up woman with black plate on and long white hair with purple accents. See one me know who's that who that is. <laughs> cool. Okay, cool. And is the crowd big? It's about twenty people. Are they cheering? Half of them are quiet watching you die. <laughs> and then about five are upset and booing at the Archon for not protecting them. And then there's a. <laughs> From me? Okay. There's a couple that have like smiles on their faces. <laughs> this is the weirdest fucking way to wake up. <laughs> this is tough to say. Okay, so in her desperation to live, because although it does not hurt and she feels no fear or hate, she does not want to die. Or pain. Correct. I said, does not hurt. That is pain. Thank you. No. That is how you describe no. that. Yes, it is. No. You also so, don't feel hate. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> In her desperation, struggling 
with her bindings and gasping for breath as she dies is going to whisper struggle out an inaudible incantation while kind of moving her fingers around behind her um, in an attempt to get out of the current situation. Roll a fortitude. Okay. Check. Save. 28. In which direction would you like to gaseous form? What's the clearest path that she would see in her disoriented vision? The clearest path would be straight down, but then there would really be nowhere to go. There's a large tree behind you and a crowd of people in front of you. So what's to the left, what's to the right? People. They're like crested in around. So there's really no good way to go. Right. Gonna go right? Gonna go right. You turn to ash and travel 30 feet diagonally towards the ground. You hear a, another audible gasp from the crowd as they kind of back up and the leather-clad humanoids approach. Yeah. So how do I land, I guess, is my question. Roll a reflex save. Cool. 24. You stumble a bit trying to catch your footing, but you don't fall over. Okay. She's going to put a hand to her throat, sputtering and trying to catch her breath. Is she still wearing her gloves? Mm Mm-hmm. Who's closest to me? Citizens right now, but they're actively trying to get away from you. She is actively trying to run away. They kind of move around you giving you a wide berth as you stumble to try and get away. Roll another reflex save. I'm no longer bound, correct? You are no longer bound. 25. As you stumble forward, your throat meets a armored hand. In front of you, there is a black armored woman with one eye that is blue and one eye that is red, and she lifts you off the ground pulls her sword off her back. Do you want to do anything before we roll initiative? Yes. Yes, I would like to do something. Question, Meta, how many hit points does she have right now? You have one. I have one. So I'm very beat up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Clover is going to draw her hands together very quickly, and she is going to squeeze the bracelet on her wrist. How tightly? Very tightly. She really doesn't want to die. This is not the greatest situation ever. So, you know, she is kind of desperate to not die. So she is squeezing with a death grip. As you're squeezing, you suddenly fall to the ground. Varian. Yes, that is me. Hello. You see forming very quickly and very familiarly the bones of a humanoid and then they start getting wrapped in muscle and then skin and then the clothes materialize and a young woman falls to the ground in front of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> how far did we make it to the stables and how many other people are around us? We are about 50 feet away from what looks like a kind of dilapidated barn. There are quite a few people about a hundred feet behind you by the brewery but around you in your immediate vicinity it's just Reuben and now this child. And is this child unconscious? No. Does the child have a moment to do anything before this one does something? (laughs) Uh, No. Oh, okay, cool. Because he would see you forming before you would be able to like do anything. Varian's just going to stare. I'm assuming that he recognizes Clover. I'm assuming it's Clover. Roll perception check. Probably. But just in case. 24. Alright. Yeah, you recognize that it's your bounty. And Reuben is up ahead of you talking about how great he is. And doesn't see or hear the forming of said child behind him. (laughs) I have a question. Mm-hmm. How beat up? Is she like bloody and cut or like how beat up is she? There are quite a few dark bruises across your arms. Glass scrapes across your forehead. There is a bruise from the rope around your neck. And your palm 
that you were gripping your bracelet with is now slick with blood. Even though I'm wearing gloves? Yep. Okay. She's wearing long sleeves, so you can't see the bruises on her arms, I find. Okay. And Ruben is up ahead. Is he talking to himself, or is there someone else up ahead? He's talking to you, (laughs) but mostly himself. (laughs) Okay. So I will stop at the malformed (laughs) child. Excuse me. (laughs) And let Ruben walk up ahead. Varian's going to kneel down and stare. You going to say anything? He's going to look around rather quickly to see if anyone else has noticed your appearance and if there's anywhere he could say grab you and like duck you behind like something that no one else would see her. She is labored breathing. (laughs) There is a wooden plow about 10 feet away that you could probably hide her behind. It's not hooked up to anything currently. It's just kind of chilling in the field. Okay. Varian will reach his hand out to Clover. What am I picking up of this? Do I see him clearly? Is my question. Or am I like really fucking disoriented because of what has happened in the last five minutes? (laughs) (laughs) Roll a flat check. Sure. That is a 14, good sir. Okay. Roll a perception check. Okay. That is a 27, gooder sir. (laughs) You see a elf presenting man (laughs) reaching out his hand. Okay. Um, She's going to flinch away from your hand. Your surroundings are clearly different. Yeah. Uh, It is still slightly snowing. (sighs) What? Quiet. Quiet. Come here. I need to get you out of sight. What? Varian is going to reach under her arm and try and lift her up and try and walk her to around the plow. Roll a athletics check. 32. You lift her up and carry her around the the plow. (coughs) Oh, try and set her down so she's sitting with her back against it away on the opposite side from people. Okay. Be quiet. Wait here. Hold on. Varian's gonna reach into his bag and pull out an elixir and hand it to her. Just take that and rest. I'll be back in a minute. She takes it a little confused. Does it seem like a legit elixir? Yeah. I gave you a real elixir. I'm asking him. Okay. Roll perception check. 20. Looks like a real one. Okay, so Clover is going to... I, I'm guessing there's like a top to it, like a cap. It's a cork, yeah. She's going to pop off the cork without any energy and start sipping on it while trying to, like, catch her breath. Varian's already gone. As soon as he handed it to her, he took off to catch back up to Reuben before Reuben noticed. Okay. <laughs> Did Reuben notice? No. No. He's, <laughs> he's not even rolling for it. He's just like, no, Re- no. Reuben's too full of himself. He is currently talking about how he saved a child from a bear and that is how he got his wonderful cloak he stole from the child's father when <laughs> the father was consoling the child and I catch the tail end of that yeah did the father try and catch you after that or were they just relieved about that kid um you know honestly not sure so you got away before he noticed or I'm just lost him. I don't know. Or well, the bear caught him. Or well, the bear caught him. I'm just really good. What can I say? I They're going to learn a lot from me. I wonder where he got that from. It's a very odd cloak. Uh, the child was screaming for his dad. He said something about the Archon. So I think that his dad was in the Archon. But, you know, I didn't stay around. Asked much questions, having pilfered my reward. I mean, if the Archon are around here, should you be wearing that? Openly? That's why I waited for them to leave before I put it on. That makes sense. So do you think that if, if that other group has horses at the stable, do you think there's someone working there or we can just go in and take the horse? It is almost evening, night. 
You think there's still someone there? Potentially. Can that cloak of yours, like, do the shadow thing? Shadow thing? Oh, like, move through shadows? Yeah. No. At least not that I'm aware of. Hmm. Interesting. So... Why are you jealous of it? No, I was just curious, because I've never seen anything like it before. It is pretty cool. And that's how you learn, you ask questions. That's... He kind of shakes his finger at you in approval. That's... Yep, you're right. <laughs> that's why you're my apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how long does it take to get to the stables? <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes. Okay. All right, Clover... Mm-hmm. As you are sipping on your beverage. Yes. Roll a, I believe, fortitude for your second condition. Ah, uh, 24. You hear your stomach violently gurgle at you in protest. So I gave you a lesser elixir. So roll 3d6 plus 6. Okay. So I regain 16 hit points. You can feel some of the... Scrapes across your forehead, clothes, the bruising, and the soreness from the bruising lesson. Okay. Is the ground, like, dirt? Yes. Okay. And it's snowing? Yes. So it's kind of wet? Yes. Okay. Clover is going to lay on her side in the snow mud with her hair strung out beneath her, getting dirty. And she's going to, like, start to cry a little... Just kind of in despair, but she is still kind of <laughs> catching her breath and muttering something about crumbs. So that's what that's she's she's ha- she's having a moment. Varian, yes. as you approach Le Barn, oh, it's French. <laughs> you see a tidy but dirty human in well-maintained clothes. Ah, uh, bit late. Do you guys need something? I'll just look over at Reuben, who's leading this. Teach me, <laughs> Reuben. Ah, uh, yes, my dear. We would like two horses, please. It is of great urgency as I and my mentee need to get to Grace. Right. Um, okay. Did you have money? Don't look like you have much money. It's gonna be like, uh... I mean, it depends on the horses. If you want well-rested ones, probably run you around two gold. You would charge an Archon. How could you? <laughs> so dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure the vessels at the cathedral hear about this. Oh, calm down. Uh, I didn't realize you were an, an, Ar- an Archon. Your friend isn't dressed like one. You just have a cloak on. Uh, my apologies. I just, you know, this is how I make a living. Usually, Archons don't just ask for them for free, so I'm a little confused. Right, um, we'll give you some coin, but definitely not two gold. That is highway robbery. Uh, It it really (laughs) isn't, but... (laughs) Uh, I guess a couple coin is better than nothing. Thank you for your understanding. I would like to eat tonight. And she goes and gets the reins of two smaller horses. Uh, Here here you go. Uh, Please don't let the vessels know I gave you any trouble. I don't don't want any trouble. And he will hand her ten silver. (laughs) Cheapskate. And that's uh, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> You're very welcome, dear. And he kind of pats her on the head, takes the reins, and starts walking past you, Varian. And as he does, he gives you a wink of that's how it's done. <laughs> oh my god, Varian will give her a slight nod and then grab the reins of the other horse. All right, so you take one of the reins from Reuben, yeah. Uh, how close are we to the exit of this town from the stables? I just need a secluded spot for a minute. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> there is a exit almost immediately to your left. The entire town, since it is kind of built on the farmland itself, is encased in a fence, and there is a opening to the fence 
almost immediately to your left outside of the barn. To your right is a large dark stone cathedral with water gushing from its sides out from underneath it. And then roll a perception check. 27. Catch the glint of three glowing eyes out in the marshes behind the cathedral as it dives into the mud. Okay. That's fun. That's a, probably a fun thing. <laughs> Potentially. Potentially fun. Um, so should we go out the gate here? Into the marshes? Are you crazy? I'm gonna leave out the other entrance. Man, you have a lot to learn. Good thing you're with me. Why? Why not through the marshes? Do you want to die? What's in the marshes? He leans in. Have you heard of Fae? The fairies. Uh, we haven't seen much fairies in close to 500 years, but, um, creatures? Definitely. I don't think fairies would pose much of an issue, really. But, um, there's other things out there that share similar qualities, just much larger and sharper. Right. And they're in the marshes. Uh, yes, they're right. in the marshes. I see. Is there anywhere else secluded? I just need to hurry up and make him die. <laughs> you could go behind the barn and just hope he doesn't make sound. I mean, there's no one really around you. They're all pretty much at the pub or at home. You're in a field, basically. There's no places really to hide outside of that plow that you hid bounty. <laughs> That's right. It is good that I'm with you. I'm going to put my hand on his shoulder, and I'm going to harvest his soul. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Alright. So needs to roll a fortitude save. Ooh, I rolled so bad. 11. That fails. <laughs> Actually, that critically fails. Cool. You put your hand on his shoulder. A dense, smoky white orb floats out of his chest, and you grab it, and he collapses to the ground. Okay. I would like to lean down and take the cloak off of him. Okay. And I would like to go through his bag. What has he got? There is the rolled-up parchment paper of the bounty you already have. There is a small coin purse, a couple of rations, some flint... Not a, not a whole lot. He, he doesn't seem the most prepared for life. <laughs> okay. I'll take it all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will... What are you going to do with the soul? I don't know. Hold on to the soul for a second. How far am I from the side of the barn? Just so I can drag the body. <laughs> 20 feet. Okay. I'll pull the body behind the barn just out of view. What kind of shirt is he wearing again? Simple tunic. Okay. I'm going to take a length of rope from my bag and I'm going to take his tunic off. I'm going to rip it and ball it up and tie it around the back of his mouth and tie him up. <laughs> As if I were to leave him on the train tracks at like full body. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Alright. So that he is nice and secured. Arms and legs are tied up. His mouth is gagged. And then I'm going to flip him over face down. <laughs> And then I'm going to put his soul back into his body. <laughs> and then I'm going to go walk out casually and grab the horses and head back over to where I left this weird child that somehow formed like an Eladrin. Right. As you are walking away, you hear a muffled gasp and the struggle of someone tied up on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, trust me, it wasn't a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you get over to the plow where you left a small child alone. How heavily is it snowing? It is steady now, starting to stick to the ground. So Clover is on a heap on her side with her hair kind of a mess below her in the mud. There are tear stains on her cheeks and she is flopped on the ground and when she sees you, she is going to hold up the elixir with the cork back in it. Is it empty? Yeah. I don't want that back. I'm so sorry. I realized that I didn't have my bag. 
So I can't give you any gold for this. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I think we should have a discussion, but not here. Um, we need to get out of the city first. It's not a city. Are, are you... Um, this is to him. <laughs> Fair. Uh, she, like, kind of rubs her eyes and slowly pushes herself up. <laughs> She's just hair is a mess with mud in it and snow. Are you Guild's friend? Never heard that before. What are you talking about? We need to get out of this place quickly. Why? I can explain once we get somewhere safe. Who are you? <sighs> I'm gonna hold the brains out to her from one of the horses. Get on, we need to go. Um, it's for your did they, safety. Did they follow me here? I. Again, let's talk when we're somewhere else. Okay? Okay. Clover is going to slowly stand, just looking like a fucking mess, and she's gonna take the reins and squint at you and then climb on top of the horse. You should put your head up, hide your face. We need to go. So they did? She's gonna put on the hood really fast. I have no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> Perfection. Uh, you motherfucker. How dare you! Very no mount his free horse. <laughs> and look over to Clover. Follow me. And Varian will start trotting his horse towards the other gate exit that's not to the marshes. You head to the nearest bridge, cross the aqueduct. Once you cross the aqueduct, it's pretty much a straight path out of the field onto what looks like a main road that's more cleared. It's made of gravel, looks more maintained than just like a dirt path leading away from this little town. Okay, we'll head down that path, give it a few minutes. I don't know if Clover would try and talk to me before that. Once we get out of the town. How fast are you riding? I mean, after we get out of the town, I'd pick up the pace. I mean, she thinks we're running away, so she will follow at the pace you set, <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> and I will keep an eye out for any sort of offshoot or abandoned place or maybe like an inn that's not part of the city or town. It's just one of those ones you come across the road for travelers as we meander with haste while one of us is panicking for their lives. Yep, Clover thinks that um, we're running from the people that tried to kill her and that you are Guild's friend! (laughs) There's nothing but marshes and fields as far as the eyes can see. As you travel along this path, It connects with another road. This one looks of higher quality, is more compact, smaller gravel. Roll a perception check. Both of us? Sure. Roll a perception check. 33. 20. And your god-given roll? 26. You both see a post in the ground at this T with two boards pinned to it, an arrow pointing to the left on one of them and an arrow pointing to the right on the other. Varian, you make out that the one pointing to your guys' left says it leads to Zion and the one pointing to your right says it leads to Gehenna. And what do I make out? You see the sign. <laughs> yeah. Gehenna is south, right? Southeast-ish from where you are, yeah. So seeing those signs, Varian will go down the path towards Gehenna. Okay. Uh, Clover follows, looking back every once in a while. As you look back, there's no one chasing you. I, I think we lost him. Varian will look back and go to get somewhere safe for you to sit and rest while you answer some questions. Um, I, it wasn't me. 
what wasn't you? She kind of slows the horse a bit. <laughs> Varian will slow his horse and look back at her. What questions? Again, we should get somewhere where you can rest and, I don't know, clean up. Who are you? Again, we should get somewhere secure first. But you're not answering my question. Uh, the name's Varian, okay? Okay. Does it look like there's anywhere we could stop or... <laughs> I mean, I don't have camping supplies at all. <laughs> Neither does Clover anymore. No, there is nowhere to stop. I mean, you could stop anywhere, but there's no, like, built structure okay. to rest at. So, Farron will go, you don't have anything on you, and I don't have anything for camping, so we need to get somewhere to get a room, I guess, so you can rest, oh. not out in the snow. Uh, right, but, uh, you said you had questions, so why don't you just ask me now? Because we have to find a room anyway, right? Uh, so what, where did you come from, and why did guilt send me to you? Who are you talking about, and why did you, why did you form like an Aladrin? <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know what those words mean. How did you get to where I was? Um, Clover is going to... Is there, like, dried blood all over my palm now? I guess and the inside of my glove. It's in the inside of your glove, okay. yeah. Is my hand sore, then? A little, yeah. Okay. Clover is going to lift her gloved hand and kind of turn it over like she's looking at a watch, and she's going to point at the bracelet. What do I see with this bracelet? Does it look like anything? It looks like a black metal that has been warped into what kind of looks like a Mobius band where it has no beginning or end. And in the center, what should go through is just a black hole. And on the back side, as she's pointing at the bracelet and it's kind of just dangling there, you see the back is covered. Huh. And you said guilt gave you that? Uh Uh-huh. Why would whoever that is give you that? Well, I was hoping you would know. As he said, if I needed help to squeeze it, and I would be protected. So... Well, I don't know any guilt. And, um... What? How did you... The last thing I heard about you, your, your clover, right, was that you were in the woods in Grace. Her horse stops. <laughs> I don't know you, so how do you know me? Well, Clover Barrows, Varian's going to reach into his bag and pull out the poster and say, I think uh, a lot of people probably know who you are right now. I'm going to trot my horse back over to her and hand her the poster. (laughs) You'll see a picture of yourself. Why am I on a poster? I was hoping you had the answer for that. Um. Uh. Why would people want me? Well, if you look right there, it says that your reward is for platinum. Which is quite a lot of money. Uh-huh. Which is why I saw your poster in the first place. But then you appeared in front of me like you were an Aladrin. Um, and now I have more questions. Where? 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 Are you... Where are we going? Gehenna. Well, no, after that. I don't know. I need answers from you. Well, what, what does the poster say? It says you... I handed it to you. Yeah, I know. You handed it to her. It says that some place... was it? Low Tide? Low Tide Orphanage. Some place called Low Tide Orphanage wants you, which is weird, I think. Right? Clover's hand that has the poster in it starts trembling, and she kind of stares up at you. Low Tide? Can you not read? Have you not learned to read yet? I can read! So why are you asking me questions? 
I'm supposed to be asking you questions. No, you can't. You're the one who says I know someone that I don't know. Why do you have my poster? Why because, am I on a... No, I Because won't it was go on back. a bulletin board. I didn't say I was taking you back, did I? No. I want answers. What? Also, why are you so beat up? What was happening to you? I... And why does whoever guilt is want you to come to me? Who, who knows I'm here? What? No, uh, look, um, this has been so nice, and I appreciate the elixir, but I need to go no, I... away, far away from here, um, and you should probably stay away from me, because I don't want you to get hurt either. Um, no, so, I... so nice to meet you, Varian. Bye! She's going to turn her horse and start trotting. <sighs> In the other direction. And... As she turns, she's going to remove her glove and light the poster on fire. Roll a flat check. Six. <laughs> okay. You light the poster on fire. Okay. You hear a little... I'm going to turn my horse around and pursue. She tosses the poster off the side of the horse and puts her glove back on really, really quickly. If it's the affected hand, what does my palm look like? Uh, there doesn't look to be any wound on it, but there's a lot of dried blood. Okay, so she is kind of trying to wipe the dried blood off of her palm as Varian approaches, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to pursue and... Kid, you need to stop. We need to figure this thing out. Why? I don't know you. Well, apparently you had something that brought you directly to me, so clearly there's something. Um, she kind of hides her hand and puts her glove back on really, really quick when you come into view. Do I catch up to you? She's just trotting. It's not that fast. Yeah. Just... Because you need to tell me, um, whoever this guilt is, why they gave you something to protect you, why it led you to me. Again. Who? I don't know. Why? I was hoping that you knew. You don't know who guilt is or why they gave you things but he you met told them me his name was guilt and he protected me in the forest from what creatures like leafy monster creatures they were like plants i heard something about that the plant creatures attacking and killing people oh so it's not just me no and then there was this this group that had crates full of limbs and bits of the plant creatures and they disappeared through shadows and there was a mechanical one with them. What did it look like? Like a tall mechanical humanoid thing. Oh. Um, look, it's been it's been real nice, but I need to go. Um, again, you what? should not be... What happened to you? Why are you so beat up? What do you mean? I'm fine. <laughs> Do I see the bruises around her neck and everything? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you don't see everything because she has long sleeves on, but you definitely see the bruise around her neck. Uh, there are some healed scars on her face. I mean, I can see that you've been through something and you obviously squeezed that bracelet which led you to me, so you were doing something. Yeah, uh, okay. So, you don't know who guilt is, and yet they led me to you for some reason? That's why I'm asking you questions, because you've met them, at least. Yeah. Um, so, I was being executed, um, before I showed up, I guess? Why were you being executed? I'm not entirely sure. Um, it all happened really fast, and I didn't mean for any of it to happen at all. She is very upset. <laughs> What is it? I, I didn't know. I, I was just, I wanted to help them, and then my arms fell off. <laughs> um, did you get hit in the head or something? Maybe I did. Maybe, maybe that's what happened. But look, I, it's been a really bad day. And, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, and, and where do you think you're going to go on your own? I don't know if you noticed from the poster, but there's a lot of people out there that want to find you because they want full platinum. Yeah, yeah, um, how, how does one hide out here? 
and survive? Do you know? Well, I've kind of been doing that. So you're like an expert on it? You could say that, I guess, but that's why I was trying to find somewhere where I could go rent a room and then sneak you into that room so that you could rest. But why do you, why? I feel like I've answered this several dozen times um, so that we can talk and we can figure out why you were sent to me and why you formed in front of me like you were a ladron. I still don't know what that means. And I feel like you probably need to rest because apparently you've hit your head and lost your arms. Well, my arms are back. <laughs> so maybe if you sleep and heal, your brain will work again. Well, that's kind of mean, but can I can I trust you, Varian? I like I just met you, so I don't know, but I you have lived a long time, is that right? I suppose from your point of view, I have lived a while. Okay. So, um where where is the farthest place from Grace to go? Cuz I want to go there. Well, the farthest. Sion is farther from Grace. Gehenna is a little bit closer, but Gehenna is also a big city that has good supplies and resources and probably a nice place for you to sleep. Well, I lost all my stuff in the town I was in, and I don't know which direction that town was in, but it was kind of small. Do you remember where generally you were? How? I don't know where I am in right now. You're in the Death Kingdom right now. Gehenna's the capital. Uh... According to what I overheard, about ten minutes before you formed in front of me, you were supposed to be somewhere in the forests near Grace. No, it's been a long time since I've been there, I feel like. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> it was actually like a day ago you were in Grace. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where guilt saved me, was in the forest. And then he gave me this again. And then I, I popped up in front of you. Do you think... Do you think it's magic and that maybe... Maybe you're the wrong person. Maybe I was supposed to be... In front of someone else. Ruben. Yeah. I seriously doubt that. Well, why is it serious? Because you formed like an Aladrin, and I doubt there's another one. I on still this... don't know what that means. I doubt there's another one on this plane right now. On this plane? The material plane. You say a lot of words that are weird. Uh huh. Which is why we should probably go sit somewhere where you'd be comfortable and can heal and we can talk. I'm comfortable on this horse. In the snow with your wounds just wounding you. I mean, do you have a med pack? No, I had an elixir and I gave you that. Why don't you have a med pack with you? Why? I just don't get hurt. How? By being good at what I do. What is it that you do? <laughs> well, I guess technically right now it's looking for people. Persons of interest. Why did you have my poster, Varian? Because I need money. And your poster was worth a lot of money. So I was originally going to try and find you and take you back to Grace and to Low Tide. But that was before you formed in front of me, and that seems more promising of a lead than money. So you're you're not taking me back, right? Right. But I did overhear another group discussing what they think is your last known location, and they were going to head out to try and find you. So there are other people out there actively looking for you, which, for you... I don't want to hurt them, but I will. It... <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> well um, you don't look like you're in the condition to fight anyone right now. So, again, we go somewhere, rest, and you heal up or whatever, and then... Okay, okay, Varian. If you're lying to me... Right, well, I'm not lying, so let's go to Gehenna. Okay. 
to the nice place where you can sleep, and I can go get a room, and then sneak you into that room. Why so do no you want money? That. Because it costs money here to do things. What are you trying to do apart from finding people? That's pretty much all I'm trying to do. Find people? Persons. It's it's not important right now. We need to get you out of sight. Uh, there's no one around. You know what I mean. I don't think I'm in anyone's sight except yours. We are traveling on the road right now, and I just told you there's at least one group of people that are going to start heading this way to try and look for you. Okay, so we go to the city and we rest, and then what? And then we figure it out once you're healed up. Mm. Okay. Grin's going to turn his horse around and go, come on, let's go. Clover kind of hesitates and then looks at the, like, charred lump of paper that was her poster. And she's going to slowly turn her horse and cautiously follow Therian. Okay, and we're going to head towards Gehenna. Alrighty. As you guys start making your way back towards Gehenna, roll perception checks. 25. 27. Oh, 21. That's my minus. 21. Alright, you hear the galloping of a group of horses coming from the direction of Sabbath, and we'll end there. It's them bitches. Them bitches. <laughs> them bitches. <laughs> Thanks everyone so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed listening as much as I enjoyed kind of making me not actually want to capture Clover right away. It's all part of the plan. It's all part of the plan. <sighs> We have social media. Check us out at Top of the Round on Facebook and Instagram and at Totercast on Twitter, which is X, but it's Twitter. We're also at Totercast on Blue Sky and we're at Toter Podcast on TikTok. You should check us out in all these places. Throw us a follow. Let us know what you think. Join us on Discord. Let us know what you think and then we will respond and it'll be a super great. It'll be a party. Uh, and don't forget to leave us a review because that means a lot and the more reviews that you leave the farther up that we pop and so people are like oh my god I should listen to this show and then they click and then a life is beautiful um, so you should do that we also have a website at uh, where all that stuff is linked if you don't go to the show notes first do you want to send us actual mail? we have a P.O. Box White Raven Studios P.O. Box 603 Circle Pines, Minnesota 55014 thanks guys